catch your brain. That's the thing. We have come to receive the word. We have come, Lord God, to be built up. We have come, Lord God, to be encouraged. But Lord God, in our coming, we understand that as we come to get encouraged from you, we thank you, Lord God, that you will use us this week to come to encourage somebody else. So Lord God, what you do with us, how you bless us, we'll go and teach others how to get that blessing and how to walk in that, that, that fullness of your presence. So we thank you, Lord God, that we are not shepherdless. We thank you, Lord God, that we are strong food. We thank you, Lord God, that we are full of faith. And we are full of great faith, strong faith, all the time, in every situation, every scenario. Therefore, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. and amen. Well, all right. Real quick, let's jump back into song. Song. Oh, my God. Champions! That's who you are. You're champions for Almighty God. You win in every conflict. Every spiritual engagement that you face with the enemy, you go to the word, you allow your faith to be released, you release your faith in God's promises, and God always comes through for you. Can I get an amen? amen. You are one that argues and fights for God's word, for God's standards, for God's principles, and you fight for other people. In the name of Jesus, glory to God, you do that with the absolute pristine, absolute excellence, the absolute tutelage of the Almighty God through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And you and I, we are getting better each and every day. I'm telling you right now, you are just getting better each and every day. You got to speak that to each and every situation and circumstance that you currently engage yourself into. Amen. So, all right, glory to God. Let's go to Psalms 23 again. Psalms 23. You know, this is a very famous song. This is a beloved song of, of every Christian, glory to God. And I'm telling you right now, as Christians, we need to take this song to the world. We need to explain this song to the world. They can quote it, they heard it, but we need to break it down for them. Let them see God through this, this powerful song. So let's read, look at this here. Verse one says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my cup with oil, my cup now, the Lord is my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Hallelujah. All of these from verse 1 to the end is a description of how relationship works with God. It's a description of who God is and how we should respond to God, relate to God, and allow God to shepherd us. Now David came to that conclusion at a young age. How? Pastoring or shepherding sheep. You need to go back to the experiences that you had when you were younger. When we were younger. I'm not talking about negative experiences. I'm talking about jobs that we were given to do. Different duties and tasks that we were given to do, chores and stuff like that. Those things shape your character. Especially when you do them right, you do them well. You do them with excellence. They shape our character. When you do them without a bad attitude. When you do them saying, thank you, I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to contribute. See, when, when selfishness grows in and when arrogance comes in, you no longer are grateful to being able to help out. You're no longer grateful to be able to contribute. But you become selfish and thinking that it's all about you when it's not all about you. No relationship that you get into is all about you. Any relationship that we engage in, it is never all about us. When we get into a mentality that is me, 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 I, 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 my, 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 and there is no reciprocation, that is a warped relationship perspective. 
Not even good God Almighty, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was all about him, him, him. The Father wasn't all about him, him, him. The Holy Spirit wasn't about him, him, him. Yahweh Elohim wasn't about them, them, them. It was them, and then they said, let's do something for someone else. Let's create. Let's sustain. Let's maintain. Let's contribute. Let's build up. Let's bring increase. Let's bring joy. Let's bring peace. Let's share love. That's life. That's life more abundant. And then everything that this life can produce from a material standpoint is just like fruit on the tree. Oh, hallelujah. The things that we do are not us. The things that we have, they are not us. They are what we produce. We are not God, but we are what God produced. And boy, do you look good. Oh, hallelujah. All that fruitfulness you bear it, all that shepherding that you look like you under a shepherd. You're supposed to be blessed, but you cannot lose focus on the connection that you have. We cannot lose focus on the connection that we have from God, by God, for God, and through God. Because the minute we lose sight of that, Satan has got a wedge in there, and he's going to try to corrupt us and get us out of humility and put us right into arrogance and selfishness and conceit. Hallelujah. It cuts off the flow of God. So we look at this psalm, and this psalm is a good calibrator. It helps us to refocus. It helps us to get back a hold of ourselves in a, in a good way. Amen. So we, we dealt with some things. We looked at the fact that God is. You know, when we talk to people, and sometimes we have to remind ourselves, so wait a minute, as good as it's getting, and as good as it's going to get, the Lord is. We can never lose respect for who God is. As God, as God of the universe, as God of our lives. We have to stay humble to that. And you're going to have to teach folk your problems in life when it comes to peace and joy and mercy and walking in a completeness and a fullness and like you have tapped your purpose is because you are shepherdless. You won't respect the God that created the heavens and the earth. You won't respect the God that has laid out commands and, and precepts. And, and because of that, you have submitted yourself under a false God. His name is Satan. And you are following his way of doing things to the team, and you love it. That will not secure your place in heaven. It will not. Reject Jesus, you're in trouble. People don't want to hear that. They don't like to hear that. That's not what they want. But it's what they need. Why? Because it keeps us rooted and grounded. It keeps us forever grounded in the things of God. So now, he says, the Lord is our shepherd. And we started there yesterday, on the last week. And we're going to finish there. We're going to complete all of them. I'm going to read through all those definitions, and then we'll break down, because I do want to get into, I shall not want. See, a part of making God your shepherd, he promises to say this to you and to your life and to everyone viewing your life. They don't have any want. They don't have any lack. They don't have any, come on, somebody, decreases. They're in the process of being and becoming what I've made them to be, and that is peace and prosperity. <laughs> Glory to God. And all the things that you add to your life ought to be the result and ought to create more peace and more prosperity. There should be nothing that you add into your life that brings you down. There should be nothing that we bring to our lives that bring us to a place where we are now stunted, that we are now delayed, that we are now wandering in circles. No, everything in our lives should contribute to who we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, watch this here. So we look at that word shepherd. That word shepherd was the Hebrew word ra'a or rawa, however you want to pronounce it. Okay? Here's what it means. I'm just going to read to you. Number one, to tend a flock. Number two, the pasture in. Or in other words, pasture means a land covered with grass and other low plants suitable for grazing animals, especially cattle or sheep. 
In other words, we saw that God was that for us, is that to us. Okay, number three, to feed. The Lord is my shepherd. He's going to feed. Number four, to graze. Number five, to rule. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You can't have a shepherd and you don't want the shepherd to tell you what to do. Okay? Number six, to teach. Number seven, to associate with as a friend. Oh, it gets good. It gets good. Number eight, to keep company with. Number nine, to make friendship with. Ooh, ooh. Number 10, to be a special friend. Isn't that good? Number 11, a sharing house. All right, let's break these down real quick, okay? To tend a flock. All right, watch this here. In life, we have to come to a place where we understand and, and, and tap into a relationship with God and understand the position of God in our lives. God is our shepherd. We're not God's shepherd. God is our shepherd. Right? God is tending us, caring for us, making sure that, that, that what they promised us will become our physical reality, will become your physical reality. That's the job of a shepherd. Okay? Now, you and I may have experiences where we're in a shepherding mode, a shepherding uh, format, dealing with children, dealing with people that are under our authority, whether it be at the workplace or whether it be at, uh, at some type of event that you are in charge of. There's a mentality that we take on being like our God, imitating our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm a good shepherd. He said, what's the proof of being a good shepherd? I lay down my life for the sheep. I'm willing to sacrifice for others. Sometimes you get in situations where you have to make sacrifices for others. You're in that shepherding mode, that love mode, that protection mode. And then you need to explain to people and teach people about shepherding. But you need to teach it. We need to teach it from God's standpoint first. We need to say, wait a minute. You can't get into the role of shepherding until you are shepherded. You got to allow God to shepherd you before you can lead and run anything. Oh, before you can provide for properly anything, you need to understand the role of a shepherd. Because you may be the shepherd or one of the shepherds of a family. You may be one of the shepherds in a division. One of the shepherds in a, on a team. And you and I, we need to take these principles to the world and help them to understand our role and then those that are in a shepherding position, their role. You say to that boss, you're supposed to look out for us. You're supposed to bring us all the latest information. You're supposed to make our battle easy. You're supposed to help us do our job better. We don't, we don't want you to do our job, but you need to supply us with the wherewithal so that we can do our job to the maximum capacity of effectiveness and excellence that we can do. If it's available, you need to get it to us. That's being a good shot in, in that type of situation. So now let's go to this here. Look at this here. Look at this here. This is, this is, this is a good to tend a flock, to pasture it. That's what God is saying. God says, I want you to say, I am your shepherd. I want you to be proud to say, God, you're my shepherd. He's a, he's a, he's a pasture. In other words, God says, I have everything you need to have a successful, magnificent, awesome life. And then with that awesome, magnificent, successful life, you're going to take that life while you're here and there, glorify me with it. You're going to say to me, thank you, Lord, hallelujah, and you're not going to be ashamed to tell other folks, God did this here. God answered my prayer, and if you want, I'll show you how to get God to answer your prayer. That's championship thing. That's championship living. Look at this here. To feed. Now, the Lord said, I am your shepherd. Now, let me put it in context real quick. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want the very end result of God being made your shepherd by choice is that all of your wants, all of your lacks, all of your decreases are going to end. God says, I'm going to apply my power, my love, my wisdom. I'm going to tell you what to do. You can't have problems with number five, God ruling. God ruling is telling folks what to do. Different types of rulers. 
Tem dois grupos. É vivo. Like different types of shoppers. You have good shoppers and you have hard. You have bad shoppers. We got a point where we learn about what is good and evil. Let's choose good. We choose good, we get the end results of choosing good. And what is the end result of choosing good? Well, how about you being blessed? Press down, shaking together, running over, hallelujah. And it's because you believe in the shepherd. You believe in the shepherd. Look at this here. You believe in the one that says, I'm promising to feed you because I am, and I am a feeder. I will feed you. But there's a part. We got to do our part. How do you know we got to do our part? You can't be shepherded if you're running from the shepherd. You can't be shepherded if you won't spend time with the shepherd. You can't. I mean, it's a two way situation, amen. You have to tell your friends this, your family this, your co workers this. You come in there with the anointing of God all over. You come in there with joy. Catastrophe hit the whole situation, but you still smiling and praising. This hits you. This impacted you. But you get impacted, and you go, oh, hallelujah. Well, got the Lord to speak on this. Lord, I need your help. You my shepherd. I'm your sheep. Every time you ask me to do something, I do it. I go to church. You tell me to raise my hand. I raise my hand. You tell me to praise. I praise. You tell me don't do this. I don't do this. You know I wanted to do that. You know I wanted to give them a piece, but you said don't do it. I didn't do it. That's because he's the ruler. He's your shepherd. Now, what we have to do as Christians, we got to start explaining to some of these folks that don't understand the shepherd and sheep relationship. And, you know, the world said, you know, sheep are dumb, sheep are needy, sheep are all that. Yes, I am, but hold on. I'm not a sheep like the animal. I have been created in the God class. I voluntarily submit to Almighty God and God's rulership and God's ability to feed me and God's ability and what he wants to do. I love somebody. So you got to look at the world and say, don't try to play me like a fool. You understand what I'm saying? Because they will. Because they sure the devil. That don't make them bad people. It's what they do that makes some a bad person. You being a Christian don't necessarily mean you're a good person. You'll die and go to heaven, but you may do nothing good for God or anybody else. But you believe in Jesus. Now, that's, that's a work relationship. I mean, you know, when your relationship with God is just give me, 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 I want, I want, I want, I want. That's a work relationship. That is not a healthy, that is not even a God-ordained relationship. Any relationship is take and give, give and take. There is a reciprocity. There is an exchange. And I know you have to teach some people, hey, uh, you've been getting, 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 now it's time for you to give, 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 give. Hello, somebody. For it to be back. Now, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I'm not saying, okay, you give five, I give five. You, you give three, I give three. I mean, for baby infantile relationship, that's a great way to start. But then it grows into something to where it comes from the heart, and I give based on what I'm able to give. And the more I give, I should get a return. You don't sow love and get hatred. You don't sow peace and get conflict. You don't sow joy and get negativity. And you have to teach some folk, if I sow good to you, I expect good to come back from you. If I sow peace into your life, I expect peace to come out of you. Now, if you've never been taught, then I'm going to teach you and stop fighting you. You know, that's what the shepherd says. Stop fighting me. He don't say it like I'm saying it. You know, hey, hands back some. So, but you need to go to God yourself and, and then take away every personality that teaches the word of God to you or have taught the word of God to you. Strip all of their idiosyncrasies and all of their hang-ups and quirks and things that you don't like about how they do it. You don't like how they do it. Do it then.
I go to McDonald's sometimes. They, I swim sometimes. I, I don't necessarily like how they do it. Damn, them cheeseburgers taste good. You know what I'm saying? Them cheeseburgers taste good. You take the cheeseburger and enjoy it. I mean, I like the color of the wrapper. But that cheeseburger tastes good. Hey, don't get hung up on who brings you the message and how. Hear the message. None of us is perfect at this. We all need help from God. I got up this morning, did not want to come to church. Did not feel like getting up. I was sore. I was tired. I was like, oh, oh God, not one of these days. I just did not want to get out of bed. This was one of those days I said, I want to stay in bed till about 12. I laid there. I said, God, shepherd, I want to need your help. I need strength. I need a touch. Within 10 seconds, plot out my whole mood change. That's how you overcome those negative circumstances, those negative emotions, those thoughts that come into you that say, don't do. This is Sunday. This is a big day. I, got, I didn't even get upset with the enemy for attacking me like that. I'm upset now. But man, what a mighty time we've had at Great Bush. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to do that on Monday. Call on your shepherd for the littlest of things. You out of sorts? Things is going wrong? Lord, you are my shepherd. And I got proof that I am your sheep. I am your surrendered child. I am your surrendered creation. Because I got more things I've done for you when you've requested than I don't. I've eaten more from your blessing than I have not. Y'all get that? Y'all understand that? Your God keep blessing you, blessing you, blessing you. So if out of 100% of the time, God has blessed you 80% of the time, and you have done it yourself 20% of the time, God has been more good to you than you have been to yourself. And when you got a life of knowing that God has hooked me up, especially at critical times, man, you always want to be like, Lord, be my shepherd. What, what can I do? Look at this here. To graze. God says, I'm going to take you to the best graze. I'm going to get you the best of the best. But how many know you got to have faith in that? You got to believe God for that. You got to build your faith up. That's why all this hearing the word, come to church, you know what I mean? All this, you reading the Bible on your own. Have you ever just said, you know what? Lord, I just want to talk to you today. And Lord, I just want you to talk to me. When you're a baby Christian, you just open the Bible and start reading. But as you grow, you start learning what John is all about. What Matthew's all about. What the book of Peter's all about. What the book of Revelation is all about. And you start now going to specifically feed your spirit based on your common need. Because whenever you and I have a need, our shepherd says, I'm here to meet that need. I am your pastor. In other words, everything that you need to be victorious, to be successful, God says, I'm your shepherd. I have it. Go to the grocery store. They got everything you need. And they say, just walk up and down the aisle. Get what you want. The Lord is our shepherd. He says, I'm bringing you to a place where you're going to be able to say, I have no wants. I have no needs. All of my needs are met. What does Philippians say? All of our needs are met according to what? His riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Well, that was the result of them giving to support the ministry. You can't expect to have verses 2 through 6 without first reconciling with verse 1. Making the Lord your shepherd. You've done that. When you made the Lord your shepherd, benefits, 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 benefits are coming your way. Blessings, 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 blessings are coming your way. But there are also going to be some warfare associated with that because Satan don't want you to reach your peak. He doesn't want you to reach your apex. He doesn't want you to reach that place of excellence and that place of integrity where you now get so excited about God that you begin to tell everybody, you begin to just whistle through life praise of God, knowing that the next storm is going to be defeated by God and you. That the next issue that rises up, no matter what it is, you are going to crush it with the word of God. Why? Because you know the scripture. And when you say you know the scripture, that means you know what God has promised. Wait till you get to that place. I'm saying, God said, I'm going to take you to a place where you're going to be able to say, 
you're going to be able to experience, you're going to be able to feel, I have no lack. Woo! That's good. That's not arrogant. That's the result of the new heaven shepherd. That's not, we don't want to put human arrogance to that. We want to keep spiritual humility laced on that. Why? Because those are the keys. Humility before God, recognizing and knowing that God did, that God's helping. Though, when you are approached by people and say, how did you get that? You say, God bless me. Those are the keys to exaltation. Those are the keys to greater increase. The Lord is, got that one down pat. I know God is. Now, I personally say yes to the invitation. He is my shepherd. He is the one to tend to me, to pasture me, to feed me, to graze me, to rule me. To teach me. He is my shepherd. He is the one. While I'm, why am I smiling in the midst of all this chaos? Because I have a special friend. It's God. It's Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Father God in Him. Never seen Him. I believe in Him because of Jesus. I be, I've never seen Jesus. But I know He is. I know He was. And then I read Revelation, I know he is to come, the Almighty. He gave up all the glory. He gave up. Omnipotence gave up. Omnipresence gave up. All the attributes, the power source of being identified as Elohim. <coughs> gave up on this. Became a human to purchase our freedom. From the hireling, Satan, the bad shepherd. Satan's a shepherd, but his MO is different from God's MO. Oh, Satan's a shepherd. And there are people that serve Satan and do everything he tells them to do. Everything. And he's made them rich, he's made them popular, he's given them power, influence. But they do some stuff for him that they have been sworn to secrecy. They cannot tell. And Satan is such a horrible shepherd. He's a dominating shepherd. If they tell what he has told them to do, he is planning to kill them. Jesus won't make you like that. Jesus said, Look, I, I, I'm going to put up with your wandering, I'm going to put up with your complaining. While I'm doing that, putting up with it, this is how God puts up with it. He teaches us that that's not the best way to do it. Do it like this. So now, definition number five and six start working together. Definition number five, to be a shepherd, is to rule. Definition number six is to teach. We got to understand that there is, there is no proper rulership without teaching people how to do it so well that they don't need that oversight rulership active, but they know it's there. But they can be free because they're functional. They can be free because they're educated. They can be free because they've been equipped. He's our shepherd. That's what he's doing. Y'all know, know it on a different level. If you refuse what to do, to go from fifth grade to sixth grade, what's going to happen? You're going to repeat. <laughs> now, I don't know. I've never Googled it. How many times has the most person in the book of Guinness records been left back in school? I don't even know if there is such a thing. But you know some two Peters, and you might, and you know some three Peters. Most people ain't going to stick with the fifth grade they just going to do what? they just going to drop out. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm going to keep working with you until, and, and for you, okay, I'm going to keep working with you until you get that diploma. And you may not do it the traditional way. You may have to get you a GED and then eventually go and get the real thing. Because in this society, you got to have some exceptional skills and abilities and know some serious people if you're going to make it without an education. And when I say education, I'm not saying college education. I'm saying education. 
I mean, no, you don't have to be a college grad to become a great bricklayer or a police officer. They just need to be able to teach you how the job is done. You just got to have the ability to learn. And you have the ability to learn because you've been created in the likeness and the image of God. There is nothing too difficult for you, especially when you know you got to connect. I got the shepherd on my side. Greater is he. Y'all know the rest of that scripture. But you got to believe that. You got to call on that in any situation. Nothing is impossible with God, and nothing is impossible to them that believe. That's the People want impossible things, and they don't want to do nothing with it to believe. They just want to snap their finger and think it's going to happen. There is a process to this thing. There is a formula to be put into this thing. And God says, you got to believe. And if you don't know what believe is, if believe is based on your estimation, you have not gone to God and said, God, teach me what you mean by believe, because I need your help. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those other things you desire, want, and need shall be added. Why seek ye first the kingdom of God? So that you have a proper foundation in you so that all those things you want, and especially when you start multiplying things, so that they will corrupt you and you start seeing more things than scriptures. More things than service to God. Serving God keeps you humble. Serving God keeps you rooted. Serving God keeps you grounded. Coming into the presence of God keeps you rooted, humble, grounded. Y'all know this is true. This is elementary. This is not deep stuff. Watch people that fall away from the church, they're like, and when I say their life, I'm not talking about their material life. But them, they get more negative. They won't tell you the times of depression and anxiety and all the other attacks that they succumb to because they don't have that full armor working. They don't know how it works. Where's my guy? I ain't going to do it today. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We humble soldiers, but we soldiers and champions. We know how to fight. We know watch Jesus fight and whoop that devil and whoop every circumstance, and we doing the same thing. You doing the same thing in your life. You're just getting better. He's our shepherd. Glory to God. He's ruling us, but he's teaching us. He said, no, 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 not like that. You got to do it like this, and this is why. When you're a good teacher, you always explain why. When you're a good teacher, you always explain how. When you're a good teacher, you always explain what, you always explain when, you explain the who, who, what, when, where, how, and why. That's being a good teacher. And in life, you're going to have to talk to people and teach them about the shepherd, who he is, why he is, how he is, when he is, and what he do. Do you know when you engage, when you and I, when we grow to that level of our spiritual relationship with God and that give and take exchange, you know that's where real living is? That's where life really, really gets full. That's where it's like, you know what, I, I don't. I had somebody ask me, I, I, I work in the fitness industry. They asked me about where I did the seat. You know how many things they did? About 25, 30. They look at me. I said, these are my uniforms. Now, some people have that, whether it's sneakers, pocketbooks, jewels, outfits, just cups. Because they wanted it and they got it. Some with the good shepherd, some with the wicked shepherd. God's promise is you shall not want, you shall not lack, but you have allowed me to be shepherd. If you want it good and you want it to be a part of your arsenal, sharing with people how you got it and who helps you to get it. You'll be a good teacher. 
That's why God is throwing. God always tells us what, when, why, how, where. And a lot of times, especially when he's in rulership mode, he goes from rulership mode, tells us what to do, then he goes to teaching mode, tells us how to do it. Did y'all get that? If you are ever in a situation where you have to now govern people, you, you're in a rulership position, you have authority, you have final say so. The dictator just says, do this and that's that. The bad rule, the bad leader just says, do that. How I many know in certain circumstances and situations, how I many you can't get a whole narrative? And some people want a whole narrative, they just run that because they think they have power because they cannot ask 10, 15 million questions. Come on. We got a job to do. You got a job to do. In certain situations, you know what to do, just do it. But a good leader is going to tell you what to do and is going to explain to you how to do it and why. And then turn you loose so that you can realize your own inherent excellence, your own inherent greatness. And then when you reach that pinnacle and conquer, they know you a champion. You ain't got to be pat on the back and praise like you praise God. No, you exactly listen. I got it growing now. Give me another opportunity. I need, give me something else to conquer. Give me something else to dominate. Give me something that the devil's trying to do and still kill me. Give me something else. Give me another person that I can help. Give me another person I can show that Satan's got you by the throat and I'm trying to show you how to get his fingers from around your neck. Because if I get his fingers from around your neck and leave you, guess what? Say you're gonna be right back there again with a stronger grip on your neck. You gotta teach people how to be independent but interdependent with God. And dependent on God. To be in an association with as a friend. That's what a shepherd is. God says, I'm your friend. You know, the devil's got us all mixed up thinking that God is upset with us and angry with us. And every time we make a mistake, he ready to beat us down. No, God says, I can show you. How not to get into that predicament. God goes into room too long. Stop doing that. And you won't have that. God said, let me show you how to break free and how to fix it. That's what I love about God. Amen. Good to see you. Number eight, to keep company with. Now, wait. God says, I'm, I'm, I want to be your shepherd. I want to associate with you as a friend. I don't want you to think of me as an enemy. I don't want you to think of me as a killjoy. I don't want you to think of me as this dictatorial, dominating God. I am not that. That's Satan. You know when God created Adam and Eve, he left them in the garden. This is what I want you to do. That's rules. Do this, do this, do this. Do this. Don't go over there, don't go over there. Name that, whatever. Left, rule, rule. What do you do? This is how you do it. And this is why you do it. Because I made you the gods of this world. The authorities of this world. What did Elohim do after that? Why? Because they put man in place to run things for him. You are in place to run some stuff for God. You are in place to be an outpost for the glory of God, the power of God, the miraculous of God, and all you got to do is call on that name with a heart full of faith. You can't do this without faith. You can't do this without believing. It don't work when you don't believe. It only works when you believe. And sometimes, and more than that, you have to believe when you don't see nothing happening. Woo! But when you believe, when nothing's happening, and especially when it gets worse, when God comes through for you, when the shepherd comes through, your rejoicing is great. Or it should be. Your rejoicing should not be limited to just a moment. Your rejoicing should have some fruit attached to it. God, you did this. I want to see what you're going to do and how you're going to do it the next time. And that doesn't mean we go and create situations, situations and scenarios so that God can move. But if you do, God says, I can get you out of that. I can fix that. I can make that better. I'm the good shepherd. I know how to fix stuff. <laughs> so then we move on. He says, I want you to keep company with me. I want to make friendship with you. I want to be your special friend. In other words, God says, when the mess hits the fan in any area of your life, God says, I want you to remember I'm your special friend. And I got means and ways to fix any problem Satan has created in your life. But I need you to call on me, I shepherd. 
Shepherd, not sugar daddy. Shepherd. I'm the shepherd. You are the flock. I like flock better than sheep. I know it's in the Bible, but I like it. I like it. I'm a part of the flock. You're a part of the flock. We're a part of the flock. And we have a shepherd. That's why no one dominates you in the earth. No one rules you in the earth. God does. Now, God has set systems in place that have protocol attached to them. Married couples, boss and workers, owners and workers. You got to understand the situation. You're not dumb. You're not defenseless. You're not weak. Don't take on all of those attributes of sheep. But there are some attributes that are common to you. The Lord is our what? Shepherd. Look at this here. And then he says to be a special friend. And then this last one, number 11, says the shearing house. We dealt with this and we closed last week. Listen, as a sheep or as a member of God's flock, God says, I'm going to bless you, but you got to understand something. I need to take that 10% so that I can keep you growing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and get your hands up. All right, ladies, can y'all go and get your hands up? Men, 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 you, you, you shake your ears. <laughs> what happens when you cut it? It grows warm. Ladies, you know, men, we don't get this, but what we do is we grow along. Ladies, who's here to grow along? What do they say you got to do to it regularly? Why? Get them, get them dead if they split. I know there's some people here so good that they stuff don't even split at the end. They just cut it in. They may have a little bit of middle, that one, that one, that one, because they understand the principle. Clip a little bit and close it That's what finances is all about. That's what tithing is all about. Tithing is all about you give God says, give me a dime on a dollar, and I'll make your dollar grow. But you don't tithe if you don't believe. If you don't believe that principle, if you don't believe God, if you can't take God at his word, then don't do it. But then you'll be more susceptible to being caught by the wolf. Because if you don't share a sheep regularly, that wool gets heavy. They can't move. Wolf come. They're running like this here. And run! Run! I am. I am. You're too weighted down. But the minute you share that sheep, we said it last week, they all fish can be and their hair grows back. Why? Not just because of their hair and because of how they're made. That is true, but it's because the shepherd keeps them feeding well, grazing well, grazing with the good stuff. They always in the right place at the right time. That's what God said a shepherd is. That's what God said I am. That's what I am to you. You're a special friend. If you pray and ask God for something, and it may not happen like magic. We ain't doing magic. This is real time, real God, dealing with real people, dealing with real circumstances, dealing with real attitudes, dealing with real people making decisions that God's got to cause them all to line up to get your prayer answered. And he does it. Oh, glory to God. I'm like, God, I can't wait to see you do something else. Oh, God, I need help over here. You, are you a shepherd over this? Are, are you a shepherd over that? I said, no, I ain't a shepherd over that. That's the other guy. And you come away from that and do this, I'll shepherd you here. All right, so watch this. God's got to, he's got to bring, he's got to grace, and he's got to share. You got to pay your tithes, you got to give offerings, you got to give it to the right attitude so that you can grow more. God will grow your finances, he will grow you, will grow everything around you, will grow the stuff in your life. Why? Because that first verse, that first verse says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You're not going to get to that unless you allow God to rule, to teach, to shear you, to direct you, to feed you, to protect you, to tell you no, not that. And you don't do like Jonah. Okay. All right, let me give you what this word want means and then we talk about all right, watch this. Here. The word one. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. David says, I got this kind of relationship with God. And God says, I want you to have this kind of relationship with me too. 
We look at the life of David. David killed a bear. David killed a lion. All because they was messing with David's stuff. And David's stuff was God's stuff. That's how he saw it. So when you see your car is an extension of what God owns, then it's easy to go to God and say, God, I need help with getting this fixed. And God can either send you the money. God can question the situation when you got the money. God can send you to the right person that will do the job at half price. God got all kinds of ways to get your prayers answered. But God is saying, okay, how do you want to do this? And however you want it done, it's going to require faith. It's going to require confidence that God can do it. Conviction that God can do it. Persuasion that God can do it, no matter how long it's taken. And in the interim, in the interim time, from the time you pray for anything until the time it becomes physical reality, you need to be serving God. You need to be doing something to say, God, I believe you, I thank you. Hello. Look at this. Here. The Lord my shepherd, I shall not want. The word want is the Hebrew word kosher. Kosher. K H A W S A R E. It means, number one, I shall not lack. The word want. Break it down to the original language. That's why you cannot go into the Bible and start trying to fix your own interpretation on it. You gotta go to the original language, you gotta find out what these words mean. And when you do that, it takes a lot more work to do that, it takes a lot more sacrifice, a lot more time. Time that most of us don't have unless you have a shepherd. I'm an under shepherd. My job is to feed you the word of God, to make sure that you get God's word and then encourage you to go with God and you and God work it out. I'll show you how to do it. But you got to do it. I can't do it for you. No one can do it for you. No one should have to do it for you. God won't even do it for you. God says, I put that in you to do yourself. So that shows me you want me. Have you ever wanted something? Have you ever been wanted by something? Have you ever wanted something and got it? How did you treat it when you got it? Have you ever been wanted and then you, you, you allowed them to have it and then they treated it like it was so made in some seventh world country, blow on it, the armpit falls apart. You feel they even say, I ain't doing that. I'm precious stuff, and I say this with humility. You know what I mean, right? When, when you identify with God, you top of the stack. But you can't add human arrogance to it. I stay home. So God made you top of the stack. I'm here to treat me like I'm second part. <laughs> One, Corsair. Number one, to lack. God says, I will not allow you to lack. Number two, fail. God says, I am your shepherd. I will not allow you to fail. Number three, to lessen. I will, I will not cause you to lessen or diminish. Number four, to be abated. God says, I will not allow you to become smaller or lack intensity. Give me some intense people. As long as they got some, what's that word? Not cool. Uh, what's the word? Cut me over there. Look, they, they got some, some tassels. But give me intense. I like my coffee intense. I'll buy it into a coffee roll. I want to deal with some. Intense. Bereaved. God says, I will not you become bereaved in any circumstance in life. Bereaved means deprived of a close relationship. God says, I will not let you be bereaved in your relationship with me. Through death, through stealing, anything that the devil throws against you. I will stop all that nonsense in your life. That's the promise of God. I don't know about you. God, you going to do what? You can be my shepherd. You're going to be what? Well, God, I praise you every day. <laughs> God, I will reach you the Bible every day. You're going to be my shepherd. Okay, look at this here. Number six, to decrease. Number seven, to cause to fail. God says, I'm not going to cause you to fail. To have lack, make lower, be without, have a need, be lacking, diminish, decrease, to cause to lack, to cause to be lacking. God said, that's not for me. I'm going to do the opposite of all those things. I'm going to cause you to explode with my blessing. I'm going to cause you to explode with my blessing. I got a 
It is so important that we get out the way and let people know they are dealing with Almighty God. We're not here by accident. We're here because God wants to listen to them so that when God blesses you even more, He says, I need you to go and tell them how to get it. You know how to get it. And you got all that old stuff out of you. I know I'm trying to get all that old stuff out of you. Old mentality, old attitude, old fleshly habits. I'm trying to get out of you. Old fleshly attitude, but. No, God, they got all my nerves. No. God, you said it, you want it, that's that. Now, when I go and deal with them, let me tell you something. You know, myself, I let you want to be here for more time before I can do that. But God told me to come here. Because if you want to be here for more time, you might crack something. You might crack your head, you might crack your head, and you might crack what you're wrong head. So I do love you. I'm here. The way you treat me, if I treat you the way you treat me, I don't care. We need to have these conversations with some of these people that are just ruling our nations. Especially in the house of God. Especially if they say they're Christian. We know that. We're supposed to do that. Because we are in a leadership role. Whether you are a pastor, a evangelist, a singer, a usher, you are in a leadership role as a Christian. God's empowering us and getting us ready to drop the last message on the world before destruction is That's how serious it is. That's where we are in the time of God. And God said, I'm giving everybody. I'm giving everybody something to do. Faith and confidence and humility to do it. And of course, thank you. Let's close this. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, we're getting better. You get better. You gotta want to get better. Amen. Come on, everybody stand. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Now watch this here. Where is the presence of the Lord? Like this is me. Let's get your hands up. Let's get your hands up. Now I want to Now come on, come on. Now what do we got? Father, in the name of Jesus, you said you would be our shepherd. You said we would not be like that. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we honor you. And oh, God, we thank you for performing your work in our lives. Now, oh, God, we look left and we look right. We look at our lives and we can see your hand at work. Today, oh, God, this word, this word, Lord God, help us not only to have this as our reality, but help us to give us the boldness and the courage to share it with those opportunities we see inside. Now, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for giving us the power, the authority, and the strength over Satan and all his works. We thank you, Lord God, as we see him working in our family, working in our friends, working in our workplace, working in our community. Lord God, we will speak your word against it. 
those behaviors, those activities. Therefore, God, we thank you for pulling your word and backing your word with power and signs and wonders, Father. And oh God, we rejoice right now because you have made us your miracle. That you have made us the apple of your eye. That you have made us, oh God, the object of your affection. Now, Lord God, we open our heart, our spirit, our mind. And we say, oh God, in the name of Jesus, use us as canisters of living water to not only refresh ourselves and be refreshed by you, but to refresh others around us. Therefore, tap into our purpose. We magnify you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we trust you. Amen. Amen. Amen.